Change gears are important to older machinery and even some modern machinery as change gears. It allows you to adjust the ratio of the input shaft rotation to the output shaft rotation, sometimes known as the ratio. It's commonly used to reduce or increase the input RPM so that the output shaft can do the useful and specified work you're looking for. It may look complicated at first blush, but let's lay it bare and explain the beautiful simplicity of it all. Okay, here are a few reasons why these change gears are important to you. One, you wanna get the most out of the machine you already have by knowing how it works, even if you don't have the owner's manual. So just don't fear the gear. Two, you wanna avoid wasting time in the shop figuring out what gears to put on your machine when you're calculating a new setup and have the knowledge to make the calculations the first time and have them work. Three, if you're using this in a job shop scenario, you're bidding on jobs and you need to know all the different ways you can set your machine up. It may be limited by the feed gears you have. So uh, it, uh, it's important to have your gears uh, inventoried and have your stuff together. All right. Number four, confidence. When buying new and used machinery, there's some fantastic used machinery out there that can perform many tasks beautifully. If you understand the input and output shaft and the gearboxes they're in, you can figure out the flexible arrangements and the banjos to put the gears in the right orders and basically make this double reduction gearbox, which is essentially what we're talking about here. The mechanism is not in machinery's handbook, which is kind of a surprise, but it is nonetheless a very standard mechanism to achieve, achieve a huge array of gear ratios with very few change gears. Now, first of all, you're thinking, well, why don't we just look in the owner's manual? Doesn't it have all this stuff? Well, sure enough, I would say it should. And I'll tell you to look there first to know what gears to put in. The OEM would tell you exactly what's necessary. So here's an example. Here's an old owner's manual for a hobbing machine that we use. And it has a list of gears for each tooth count. So you change the change gears to get a determine the tooth count of the gear you're going to cut but you need to know the machine constant for the machine. So the machine constant is a number, in this case, 16. And, uh, but you could set the machine up so that the constant would be half of that or twice of that. And also sometimes, even if that's not an issue, oftentimes people want you to cut a gear that has more than 100 teeth. That's not in the owner's manual. So knowing how to calculate it, or at least having a resource to go uh, make the calculation for you. It's surprisingly tedious. There's not a direct solution for it, which is the surprise here, and, and we have the solution for you. But that's the example we're looking for. Let's cut 119 tooth gear. So you'll need to cal calculate your own change gear since it's not in the owner's manual. And there's some specialty books that do have ratios. So let's look at that. Here's, here's an old Fowder's book. It has, it has all these ratios in here that go between zero and one. And it cuts it into some pretty fine increments. So you're, you're likely to find a very close approximation of what you're looking for. Now, it's always good to check that, that, uh, that it's prime, like I said, but here's the issue with it. Small prime to number tooth gears are probably in your chain gear set. But the larger the number of prime it is, the larger the diameter of the gear is going to be and the, and the less likely it's going to be that it can fit in your gear cabinet on your machine. So that's what you need to look out for. It's a double-edged sword with uh, gear design because you like having prime number gears because they distribute wear in your gearbox evenly amongst the two gears that are running together. And so it's a common design attribute could dear gear designers use, but it's a, it's a, it's difficult to, um, fit large prime gears in your gearbox sometimes. So that, that might be a limit to some of the uh, machines, the cabinet, the physical cabinet becomes a limit to some of the machines you might use. All right, let's go make some calculations with gearcalculators.com. And if we go into the machine setup tab right here on the left, we can enter some machine info. So one of our machines is this Fatter RS00. So we'll load the machine. And then as we scroll down here, we'll see that we can store the change gears in here for future use. So that's really helpful to get a solution that is a subset of the gears you actually have and not some ideal list. So, and also making a list is very easy. So you would just go in here and 
check all the ones uh, that you should have and then take out a few of them that you may have missing and that can uh, generate a list. Now you'll copy this list and and bring it back over here and, and cut and paste it right here so that, and then save your machine, all right? So I just wanna show you that in case you're doing gear stuff, it's very handy. All right, so let's just go to change gears. Let's, uh, let's load that machine again and use that index gear list. And we're gonna make that 119 tooth gear. And I know this machine has a ratio of, excuse me, of 16. So I'll calculate that. And what's good about this, uh, this first one, this uh, change gears for machinery is it's gonna get, go ahead and calculate the sum of all the teeth in these gears, the minimum numbers first, those are the ones that are most likely to fit in your cabinet, okay? In your gear cabinet on your machine. And these are the four gear ratio, these are the four change gears, A over B times C over D. And, and the ratio you're looking for is this 0.13445537. So that is uh, how that calculator works. Now let's do brute force. And this one also uses your change gear list. And instead of uh, doing anything else, just put your uh, ratio in here. Okay, so here is the brute force one. It's gonna go check everything, all right? And uh, it's gonna give you a variety of answers. And what's important on this one and, and tolerances, that we get to try a few things if you have a very limited set of change gears and you're not you know, trying to go to make an aerospace gear or you know, you're setting a speed, for example, that doesn't have to be exact you can increase or decrease this tolerance. So I still pulled my change gears in from the machine. I'm gonna say the tolerance is five, and I'm gonna say calculate, and it gives me, after a while, this could take up to a minute or so, because it's actually, this is the hardest possible way to do it. It's the easiest piece of code. What's good about this one is, it spits out a number of solutions if you're having a hard time fitting things in your gear cabinet. All right, now we're gonna Betty Crocker this, feed it up. All right, so here are the solutions. Now, if you'll look, uh, 134, 453, 134, 453, there's a lot of exact solutions here, but notice you've got some options. There's a 22, 77, 40, 85. Here's a 20, 56, 32, 85, et cetera. So it gives you these answers in in a manner that allows you to have some options here. All right. I can't know what every single gear machine looks like or everybody's gear, change gears, you know, inventory looks like. So this is a very useful calculator. It does take a little bit of time. I usually run all three of them anyway, just to uh, collaborate, collaborate them, et cetera. So let's do this optimized one. Now, this one is cool. You just need to know the ratio. It's a two-stage, two uh, a double reduction gearbox is two stages. And on this one, you can't use your exact uh, change gears. So you have to use a range. So for this, I, I may be missing some, but let's see what it gives us. 20 to 90, you know, you've seen some answers on this before. And it gives you the answer like immediately. And it shows you that uh, it's 20, 35, 20, 85. So that has the minimum number of tooth counts. It's an exact ratio. And uh, there's some flags here that show that it's an exact match, et cetera. So it also highlights some collision risks here in this calculator as well as the others. So here's some tools that are super helpful in the gear world and uh, I've found useful in lathes and big machines like a Jones Lansom, et cetera. So this is a super handy thing. There's no direct solution. This is actually a very difficult math problem in terms of checking everything. There's no direct solution. You can't just get an equation that gives you A, B, C, and D. You have to calculate all the options. And uh, so there are three different solutions for you, coupled with a machine and coupled with our software so that you can store your change gears. And here's the output to put into Excel. When you use optimized, it's in green. It has the lowest sum. When you use brute force, uh, you get lots of options. It uses your change gears and gives you a key. And when you use change gears for machinery, it gives you a lot of options and a key as well. So you've got uh, at least four options there for change gears. Thanks again.